Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm playing a game called God's Trigger on the One X Player, which is a handheld gaming computer from a company called One Netbook. It's the latest in a line of little computers from the company, but this is the first one that's really designed first and foremost for gaming. It does not have a clamshell laptop-style design, does not have a built-in keyboard, but it does have these physical buttons here that you can use for playing games. Whether you're good at those games or not. So that is just a quick look at what gaming looks like on this device. Let's talk a little bit more about what it is, what it can do, and whether it is worth the asking price, which is not an insubstantial amount of money. It's, uh, again, called the One X Player. It has an 8.4 inch 2560 by 1600 pixel display. It, let me just exit this. It uh, is surrounded by game controller buttons and it is powered by an Intel Tiger Lake processor with Iris XE graphics. Uh, ship standard with 16 gigs of RAM is available with up to two terabytes of storage. And it goes up for pre-order through an Indiegogo crowdfunding campaign starting May 10th, 2021 for $819 and up. The retail price is gonna be about 1,060 and up. And so again, that's not an insubstantial amount of money, um, but fortunately the folks at One Netbook sent this to me so I could test it out and decide if it is really worth that. And when you consider the specifications, you realize that actually that's kind of what you would pay around $1,000 or so for a laptop with similar specs. So this particular demo unit is a pre-release prototype. It is powered by a Core i7 1165G7 processor, 16 gigs of RAM, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Uh, Entry-level models will have a Core i5 processor. It's available with all the way up to a Core i7 1185G7 processor. Um, and so there's a range of price points uh, with the entry level being as little as 8 and 19 during crowdfunding and the top of the line as high as 1500 but this is more of a, a mid-range model that's going to be a little bit more affordable. And performance is, is pretty good. It's pretty strong for the most part. And so first let's take a look at uh, the physical design. You know, as you might have noticed, it is not a small pocket size gaming device. And what that means is you've got this high resolution large screen here in the middle that gives you plenty of uh, space for watching videos, playing games, doing just about anything else that you would want to do. Um, it is a very high resolution screen. So if I went in and adjusted the display settings, you can see that they're actually at 20, 250% scaling right now. And if I wanted to, I'm gonna go up a little bit higher for the scaling. If I wanted to adjust that so that it was 100% scaling, everything would look really, really tiny and uncomfortable. So 250 is the default, and I think for good reason. Something like uh, 200 is still pretty usable, uh, but anything you know below 150 or so, I think it's pretty hard to read. But it gives you those options if you're going to use it as a general purpose computer of adjusting those things. And of course, in games, you can adjust your display settings as well, and that's something you might want to do to improve performance, because there's a lot of pixels to, uh, to drive graphics to. And in some games, it's not a problem. It manages to get over 30 frames per second without any problem at full resolution. Some games you're going to want to reduce that. So games like Assassin's uh, Creed Syndicate, even with reduced uh, resolution, I find that it doesn't get super high frame rates. A game like Steep, um, you might get higher frame rates by reducing the resolution. And I've got other videos that really delve more into the gaming aspects. So you can go check out those videos for more of that. Here I wanted to give you more of a high level overview. I've also got a video that looks at just what all these different buttons do, but I'll give you a, a walkthrough in a moment. And a video about whether you can install Linux on it. And the answer is, yeah, it seems like um, there are some tweaks that you might need to make in order to get everything working properly. But out of the box, Ubuntu seems to run reasonably well. So let's uh, let's walk around. Well, actually, first let's just do a little size comparison. So as I mentioned, 8.4 inch display, 
Uh, compared to something like the Amazon Fire HD 8 tablet, you can sort of fit this entire 8-inch tablet into the display area. Uh, so that gives you a sense of just how big that screen is. Uh, if I were looked at an Amazon Fire HD 10 tablet, which obviously has a 10-inch screen, you can see that the controllers sort of poke out on the side, so it's a little bit wider than that, uh, and definitely a lot thicker. So hopefully that gives you a rough idea of sort of how big this thing is. Again, you're not going to be able to fit it in a pocket, but it's very comfortable to hold because you've got these sort of full-size console-style controllers, uh, left and right analog sticks that are clicky, D-pad, X, Y, A, and B, a start button, a select or back button. Uh, this key is kind of nice. It actually returns you to the home screen from a full screen game, which is handy because there is no physical keyboard, so you're not going to do an alt tab or uh, escape or anything like that. Uh, you can bring up an on-screen keyboard from anywhere, within Windows at least. It doesn't seem to work in Ubuntu, at least not out of the box, uh, just by pressing this key over here. And we've got a turbo key, which actually increases the TDP. And so if I come over here and show you... There we go. That this system, while it's got a laptop class uh, Tiger Lake U series processor, it's set to run at 20 watts by default rather than 15 and has a PL2 power limit of 35. Pressing the turbo button cranks that up to 28 and 40. And so that, uh, in addition to lowering the screen resolution, is a good way to give you a little bit of extra performance when you need it, although it might take a toll on battery life. But again, pretty high performance uh, device. Let's uh, continue our tour of what's included. We've got these linear triggers and clicky buttons. So we've got four shoulder buttons total. Uh, ports include a micro SD card, headset jack, and USB type A port, plus these two USB 4 ports. They're not technically certified as Thunderbolt, but they should support most of the features that Thunderbolt 4 does. I'm told that they support 40 GPPS throughput. I don't have an external GPU, so I haven't been able to test that. But I was able to plug in a USB hub and uh, or a USB dock and connect an external display, a keyboard, a mouse, use it basically like a desktop computer, and even charge it at the same time as I was doing all of those things. Um, one dock that I uh, used supported USB pass-through power. Another one I tried did not, so your results may vary. Uh, in terms of charging, it does come with this 65 watt hour or 65 watt uh, charger, and it's fairly small and has a USB uh, connector. Looks almost like a smartphone charger, but it supports relatively fast charging. And the battery is a 60 watt hour capacity battery. Uh, what does that mean in terms of actual performance? Well. In a laptop, I would say you might expect seven, eight, nine hours worth of uh, battery life, and that is pretty much what I get when I'm streaming YouTube video using this. So again, it is a full-fledged computer. You can, um, let's just uh, bring up. A video where I don't have to worry about copyright. So you can play videos here. Well, Amazon is cheap. Try it with Capital One shopping and then tell me what you think. While you browse Amazon. And in my tests, I found that you can do this. There's a mute, mute button on the back here. You can do this for up to seven, eight, nine hours. Uh, when it comes to actually video playback, that is one of the lower, you know, less demanding things that you can do on a device like this. Um, so again, there's your return to desktop button. Um, playing games, obviously, is going to be a more demanding thing that you can do. And so you're not going to get nine hours of battery life. You're probably going to get closer to two or three hours of battery life, depending on the game. Uh, I found, you know, less demanding games you might be able to run for up to three hours, more demanding games a little closer to two. And in order to really test the uh, the battery strain, I use this Heaven benchmark, which is designed to really stress test your system. And at default settings, I found that it uh, ran for a little bit less than two hours. So that's sort of worst case scenario at default settings. Under Turbo, it ran for a little bit less than an hour and a half, again, worst case scenario. So you can see here, if we look at the stats, that it is hammering the GPU using about 100% GPU. I'm going to go ahead and hit turbo. 
and it's still going to use 100% GPU, but it's going to be able to increase the clock speeds a little bit and maybe boost that frame rate just a little bit. So that's how I tested battery life under your worst case scenario. Better cases, uh, you're going to get a little bit longer than that. Um, on the back, we do have these air intake vents, and they go out on the top. And you can hear when it's under stress that it does get a little bit noisy with the fan noise. Um, we've got volume up and volume down keys and a mute button, which I had already pressed. I can press it again to bring the sound back. And here we've got a fingerprint sensor built into the power key. So you can put your system to sleep and resume uh, just by using your fingerprint there. So if I unmute, you'll be able to get a quick sense of the speakers. They're stereo front-facing speakers, not incredibly loud, but I think loud enough to uh, to hear what you're you know, trying to do with games and whatnot. You can also plug in headphones, obviously, or it supports Bluetooth if you want to use Bluetooth audio. Let's go ahead and get out of here, though. Oh, I forget how to do that. So here's something else I'll show you. If you press and hold some of these keys, you get extra fun special functions. So pressing the home button and the turbo button takes a screenshot, saves it in your documents. Uh, pressing and holding this and the keyboard button, oh, sorry, I pressed it too long. Uh, pressing and holding it for a long time will give you the uh, Xbox menu. Pressing and holding it once will bring you to the task manager or to this window where you can get to the task manager. And then we can just tell it we wanna exit that task. Now, you might have noticed that I am using sort of this mouse mode layout. Uh, it allows me to press and hold the keyboard button to switch from using these as game controllers to using it as a mouse key. And that allows me to use the A to click uh, or double click. I can press and hold and drag and drop and right click with a B and copy and paste and do just about everything else. So it makes navigating pretty easy even without touching the screen or connecting a keyboard or anything along those lines. Um, but then again, you know, when you want to play games, you can uh, find the game you want to load. Launch your game and then press and hold to switch back to controllers. So overall, I'm pretty impressed with what's possible from this machine. Again, in terms of pricing, in terms of performance, I think it, it works a lot like a decent laptop, but in a more portable design. And it allows you to sort of play your games anywhere. Now, anywhere is sort of a, you know, interesting concept these days. because, you know, I'm mostly just staying home, so playing around the house during a pandemic. But after the pandemic ends, if you're commuting, riding the bus, you can play your games just about anywhere. Now, this is not the most demanding game. Again, I've got another video that shows uh, more complicated games. But I just wanted to give you an idea of what it looks like playing different styles of games. Um, and, you know, you can play them anywhere. But at 1.8 pounds, it's a little bit heavier than some other devices. Uh, and... You know, it might sort of take a lot of strain to hold it for an extended period there, which is why it's nice that it has this built-in kickstand. So if you're playing it on a flat surface like a table or a desk, you don't have to hold it up with your hands. And if you're not, and you want to sort of just flip that over, then you can hold it between your hands and balance this on your lap. And it's, it doesn't feel like it's 1.8 pounds. So if you were trying to play standing up, it might be a problem. Uh, personally, I'm not a hardcore gamer, as you can probably tell by my skill level in some of these games. But when I do play games, I don't necessarily want to be tethered to a TV, so I prefer playing on a mobile device like a phone or a tablet, so I can sort of move around and play anywhere. And having a fairly large screen makes it really easy to see. Having these large controllers makes it easy to control. And uh, overall, I, I actually really like this form factor a lot more than I thought I would when I first saw just how big it is. Um, if you watch my unboxing video, I was like, oh, how am I going to hold this thing? But it turns out it's actually very, very comfortable. Also feels very sturdy. Even though it's made of plastic, it doesn't feel like it's going to crumble in any way whatsoever. You might have noticed we've got these pogo pins down here at the bottom. While it's not designed to be a laptop, it is designed to work with an optional keyboard accessory. So you'll be able to just sort of attach that. And it's a gaming first device. It's never going to look like a professional device because these things do not detach. But you would be able to type on the go 
or you can always plug in a USB or connect a wireless keyboard and use it that way because it is a full-fledged computer and it really does support just about anything that you would want to do. So I can always, you know, navigate and run different applications, um, enter text a little bit more quickly, whatever. Uh, there are some limitations to this form factor. So for instance, there is no camera, so you're not going to be able to use it for video chatting unless you were to plug in an external one. And while it does have a microphone, it's not a stellar microphone, so this is what it sounds like when I'm recording my voice talking. And let's go ahead and play that back. So, you know, it's not super loud. It sounds kind of like a bad phone call, but it's there. It's, uh, it'll do in a pinch if you don't have a headset. Screen gets relatively bright or relatively dim. Actually, very, very dim if you want it to. I've mostly used it in the sort of 40 to 60 range or so. And uh, the volume... You know, it can go up a little bit high, higher than it was, but I usually leave it around 50 or 60, so I'm not disturbing people around me. Again, though, you can always plug in a headset or use Bluetooth audio if you wanted to. Now, one thing that you might have noticed here is that throughout this entire video, one thing I didn't show you was the touchscreen, and there's a reason for that. Um, in my unboxing video, you saw me interacting with the touchscreen. In this video, I didn't because uh, shortly after I received this, the touch stopped working. At first, I thought it was a driver issue, and I tried reinstalling the drivers, but that didn't work. Uh, it may or may not be a hardware issue, but it's important to keep in mind that this is a pre-release prototype that was sent to me by One Netbook, and so that's one of the key reasons I'm not particularly bothered by the fact that I can't seem to get the touch to work right now. Um, it's a pre-release prototype. These things happen, and I'm told that no other prototypes that they've tested have had this problem. I'll be sending this back to One Netbook uh, a little bit later so that they can test it and figure out what went wrong. But the other reason that doesn't really bother me that much is the mouse mode just works so incredibly well that I don't miss not having a touchscreen. Uh, even without a keyboard, even without a touchpad, I can do just about everything I need to do. I can launch apps. I can you know conduct searches. I can um, you know type things if I need to. And it works just fine. Uh, there are a few things that are going to be a little bit tedious. Entering complicated passwords, sending emails, things like that would be kind of hard to tap out one key at a time using this virtual keyboard. And the biggest downside is that if I put it to sleep and then wake it and need to enter my um, fingerprint to log in, Sometimes it doesn't recognize the fingerprint, and if it doesn't recognize it a couple of times in a row, it'll ask for a password, and you can't use the on-screen keyboard. So then I need to plug one in in order to log in. So ideally, you want the touchscreen working. But again, even without a touchscreen, if this was basically the same price or a little bit cheaper without the touch option, I almost think it would be worth it. So again, starts at eight nineteen during crowdfunding, around 1060 after the crowdfunding campaign is over. It's the One X player from One Netbook. It's the latest in a line of little computers from the company, but the first one really designed first and foremost for gaming. And while it doesn't have discrete graphics, uh, it does offer you know relatively acceptable, I think, battery life, really pretty good performance. And you can find benchmark numbers and, and more details at lilliputing.com in a written article that'll go along with this video. The description of the video will have a link. Um, and you can find details about how to, uh, to you know get one also in the description of this video. So I think it's for the most part a winner, although obviously it's not for everybody. It's going to be designed first and foremost for gaming as opposed to a general purpose computer that also games. It's a gaming PC that's also a general purpose computer. You can use it like a desktop by plugging in you know, the uh, accessories to the USB ports or using wireless accessories, but it's very much intended for gaming. And not everybody is necessarily going to want a gaming machine that is quite this large or this heavy. Um, but I do think that there are some advantages to that, um, including this large high-resolution screen that creates a more immersive experience and the support for these full-size controllers. But it is, you know, a little bit on the heavy side, and that high-resolution screen sometimes means that you might need to adjust your settings in order to get the best performance in games that do run well on lower-resolution settings. So check out lilliputing.com for more details. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a video review slash overview of the One X player. And make sure to check out our other videos for a more in-depth look into things like Linux, gameplay, uh, what are the, all these buttons do, and um, so on.